for our main presentation, I'd like to introduce uh, Robert Crane from CAA Ops. Uh, Robert does an abundance of training um, around Australia, and um, I must admit I've learned many, many things in all Microsoft 365 and uh, Power Platform, Rob, Robert. And yeah, I'm proud that we have him on to uh, do a presentation for us today. There are there have been good and bad things you've learned, haven't there, Andrew? I I, I would the suggest. good the good completely outweigh the bad, Robert. I can assure Damn, you. Damn, I that. need to work harder <laughs> to balance that out. Thank you very much for the kind intro. Welcome everybody to uh, the session. It's always a pleasure to uh, join the progressive few looking to uh, move the industry forward using some of the best tools I think that are available in the Microsoft space. So. What I thought that I'd spend a little time showing you is we've talked about, um, you know, in these presentations about probably, you know, the entry level, the basic uh, approaches to Power Automate, and that's great. We can connect to things in Microsoft 365, uh, email, files, and so on, and, you know, manipulate those. But the real power starts to come when you look at moving or working with data and information that is outside that environment. Now, the way that you achieve that is using typically something called an API. It's an application programming interface. So a lot of businesses today do their product or service very well, and they make it available outside the environment programmatically using something called an API. So at its essence, an API is simply a call to a website uh, that will either inject data or return data. Now, the good thing is that Power Automate allows us to uh, manipulate that or work with APIs directly as well. So this is where the real power of it is. So what I've got here is a Microsoft 365 environment. And again, we've gone into our Power Automate. Now, there's a couple of ones here that use APIs, but I'll start off uh, with my favorite here, which is um, Dilbert. So the name of the flow here will probably give away what this actually is. So what I wanted to do was back in the day, there was a SharePoint web part that you could plug in to um, your SharePoint called Daily Dilbert that would display, you know, a Dilbert comic of the day. Really good for adoption to help people uh, want to and start understanding and using Teams. And I wanted to replicate that. So luckily what came across my desk was uh, Dilbert API. So I'll just show you what it is here. So Dilbert, this is the URL. All right, so let's just see what happens when we run the uh, URL. So if we just run the URL here, what you'll see here um, is that it's going to basically uh, give us, uh, hopefully, a response here. And the response is going to be, um, you know, JSON, which is just some files here. So you'll see here, this is the response. So we're getting back this piece of text here. Now, this is formatted in something called JSON, so JavaScript object notation. And what it's telling us in essence is here is a URL. So if we go to a URL here that was provided, it's going to give us our Dilbert comic. So if we go and access this API, we will get a link to a uh, comic strip of the day from Dilbert. Now, what we want to do with Power Automate is obviously go out and capture that and then also uh, stick that uh, in Teams. So what I've done here is uh, you'll see that I've created a very simple flow. So in this case, I've triggered it manually, but uh, in other areas, what I've done is set up to be an automated or a scheduled flow. So that will run once a day, nine o'clock in the morning, so people know regularly to come into Teams. Now, the core of it is the HTTP action. Now, before we get too far, it's important to note that the HTTP action is a premium connector. So you'll need to have a license uh, to allow you to use this premium connector. Uh, would have been nice if it wasn't, but again, just be aware that on some of the basic plans, you may not have the capability for that connector. But also remember that it's only the person who's creating this flow that would need the premium connector. Everybody in your environment doesn't need it because I'm the one creating it and I'll be pushing the result uh, into a Microsoft team, uh, basically for people to view. So really I would be the only one in the tenant needing that um, premium connector. Now you'll see here in the action here for HTTP, I do have a number of actions. So the action here 
uh, with Dilbert is to get. So basically that means I'm going to go and record or basically read the information from the API. But you'll notice that we also have put, post, uh, and so on. So we can actually uh, post information. So that's sending information into the API, which would then uh, take it on board and take some actions. So imagine you had an accounting system. You want to push your uh, latest uh, expenses in there. You would use the uh, post action to do that. So here's our URI, which we talked about. You'll need to get that from the provider, whoever that uh, may be. And there are a number of other items in here that you can. We'll talk about those in a little more detail, but because this is a simple read API, all I need to do is get the information. Now, the real challenge when working with APIs is the format that it comes back in. So the format, as you saw, is something called JSON. Now, JSON's good because it is structured. It's like, okay, it's going to be in this sort of format, and we know that. Now, what we need to tell Power Automate here is we need to tell it that format that it's coming back in because we want to be able to manipulate the fields that have been returned from the API using our dynamic uh, capabilities here. So it'll recognize basically the fields. So this little piece of JSON here is very important because it allows Power Automate to say, okay, when I get stuff back from this API, I can break it out into, as you see here, object and title and image and so on. Now we're going to use the image uh, field at some stage. Now, getting that can be a little uh, challenging at times. Normally, the API provider will give you this. Um, you can also work it out uh, by looking at the return, and you can also generate it from a sample. So you can run the API once, generate an output, uh, and then Power Automate's generally smart enough to be able to convert that into generic JSON that you can use. But the real challenge has been at times for me is to find you know the right uh, JSON here. So that's probably the biggest challenge. But with the Dilbert one, it's pretty straightforward. And then what I've done is once I've got that, I'm going to spit that out into Teams. Now you'll see what I've got here is um, I'm going to use the HTML uh, posting method. So it's going to actually post it as a HTML so I can embed the image in there. Um, so I don't want to do it as plain text. So hopefully you need to have a little bit of skill with HTML and you'll see here that I'm just taking the image source, which is the field now or the variable called image and that was obtained thanks to the JSON file above. And then I'm just gonna format it for width and height and then uh, spit it out into uh, the team there. So it's nice and easy to do. A very straightforward way uh, to basically do that. Now, normally this would run on an automated schedule, but what I'm going to do here is just run it manually just so that we can get a, a look of it. So you'll see here in a second, if I run the flow, fingers crossed, that all works. Demo gods are pleased for the, the day. You'll see here that it's now running as with any um, Power Automate. Now we just quickly go in and have a look at the HTTP You'll see here, it's a method, it's a get. We can look at the raw inputs. So if you do have problems with your APIs, you can go in and look at the raw uh, inputs. And if we go down here and look at the raw outputs, uh, you'll see that this was the uh, JSON that came back, right? So that's basically what the API has returned. And then I've been able to pass that with my uh, JSON. So if we go down here and have a look at the JSON, You'll see here that it is worked out that the title is, you know, this, the image is that, uh, and it's now then allowed that to be injected into the action for posting in the team. Now, with all things being equal, if we go to Teams in our environment here, demo environment, we should see uh, the same Dilbert comic that we saw displayed when I went to it manually after just you know, typing in the uh, website here. So the idea here is that this is a very simple way to work with an API to get familiar with it, get it working, uh, provides a bit of fun and games uh, for those in your environment. So again, it's a very simple uh, flow that I would suggest you uh, set up to manually run at a set time uh, per day. Uh, again, to encourage people to come in and, and start participating uh, inside Teams. And once you set it up as an automation, then it can run every day. You don't have to touch it. Uh, and again, it's just adding value to you know, your team's uh, environment. 
Um, so, yeah, my machine here aims to be a bit, of a bit slow. Come on, Teams. Now, the next thing to look at is once we've done this basic stuff, we can now start looking at more sophisticated API. So there we go. So there is our um, Dilbert comic of the day. And you'll see that we get notification that it was posted uh, by the Power Automate uh, capability inside Teams. Now, that's really good because it also lets people know how it actually got there and they can ask questions and then we can start um, extending it from there. Now, that's a very, very basic API. So let's take a step back and, okay, what can we actually start doing with this is a little bit more sophisticated. So what we can do, for example, here is we can use some of the Microsoft APIs to dive into uh, our environment, our Microsoft 365 environment, and pull information that's inside the tenant. So this one here, uh, you'll see here, is a little bit more sophisticated. It's still got the core um, HTTP request in here. But if we have a look at this, you'll see what it does. It does a get, as we talked about, but it's going to the graph. So Microsoft has its own APIs for its, in, its cloud environment, typically uh, from the Microsoft graph. So you'll see I'm going to go to the graph. I'm going to go to the security, and I'm going to go and pull the secure score, right? So I'm going to go and get the secure score for the tenant and display. That's what it does. But because this is a request to private or restricted information, I'm going to have to add some authorization. So luckily, with the uh, Power Automate HTTP action, you'll see down the bottom here, we can actually put in uh, the way that we're going to authenticate. So in this case, we're going to make an Active Directory OAuth call, and we're going to inject some values that we have pre-configured. Now, again, the really good thing about Power Automate here is that I can reach into areas inside Azure. So just a quick thing here is what I've done is I've stored the authentication capabilities inside something called an Azure Key Vault, which is a secure location inside Azure. The great thing is, is I can still access those programmatically without having to write code. So how I got them in there was to use PowerShell, but how I can actually access them is just to use, again, uh, this get app secret, uh, which is part of the standard Power Automate here. So what I've done is I've gone out and recovered or basically grabbed these three items that I need to make a secure request. And you'll see here one is the tenant ID, one is the client ID, which is an application, and the last one here is basically a password. So I've been able to inject all those. Now, the benefit is that when someone you know, like a developer creates this for you, then they're not going to see those secrets, right? So again, they are in the key vault, they are locked down, um, but the developer can just access this quickly and easily without actually seeing or pulling up those credentials and not writing or embedding static values into uh, their flow. So if they do change or you want to update them over time, you can do that and you won't have to go and change the Power Automate. The other advantage of putting it in the key vault is that I can put alerts and notifications to make sure that the key vault is not being abused or someone's not extracting information they shouldn't. So once we get that HTTP request uh, to the Microsoft Graph, we've then got to go in and you'll see here, this is where the real trick of it is, is you'll see that the JSON here is a lot more sophisticated because what's being returned by that Graph API request is uh, quite a lot of information. So we need to get that right. Generally, that's in the Microsoft documentation, uh, but you can run it manually and work it out. And happy to share that if you do want that. So once we've got that, again, we need to now go in and set some variables here. So I'm going to work out what the current score, I'll extract that from the body after running a JSON pass through it. You'll see that I've got a max score. And then this was a really tricky one I worked out yesterday. When you look at secure score, it's a percentage return. So it's, you know, the current score divided by the max score. Um, doing that in Power Automate tends to be a little bit tricky. So uh, I did write a blog post on this yesterday, but you'll see here that, um, you know, looking at the formatting here, I've had to format the number so it's restricted to two decimal places. Um, I've had to divide the variables, you know, uh, the current score and the max score. Then I've need to multiply it by 100 to get a percentage, and then I've need to format it to two decimal places. So again, this expression here took me a little while to work out, uh, but that will give me this variable here. Once I've got that variable, then obviously what I'm going to do is just go to Teams, and I'm going to uh, output the result 
uh, for people to view. So again, I've already done this. So you'll see here, this is the output here. So it gives me the current score, 379, over the max score, 385, and the percentage um, is to two decimal places. All right, so if we go in, if we went into security.microsoft.com, looked at secure score, we would see that it would be uh, basically uh, the same here. Now I've run that uh, with, like I said, uh, an API call. Now the final extension I can give you here is what we can do um, is we can, once we've got our flow, we can now start doing some really interesting things. So what I can do is, I've actually done this here, is to incorporate the same sort of flow uh, into a, a Power Virtual Agent. So now if I go to my Power Virtual Agent and basically say, look, I want to see a Dilbert comic, fingers crossed, that the agent will wake up and it should post the uh, same Dilbert comic. It's just doing exactly the same uh, API request uh, out there to uh, that environment, and then we'll come back and post it in there. So the important thing here is that we can take a very, you know, a simplified way of programmatically um, setting up our environment, and we can then start reaching out to data sources outside the Power Platform using an API. Uh, you don't need necessarily to be a developer. It's just a little bit of work to understand. But largely, the world is driven by uh, APIs. So if we have a quick look down here, you'll see that I have the same uh, Dilbert comic. So there it is. And this now allows you to not only reach out and extract information from all different uh, data sources, but it also allows you potentially to post and update information as well. Um, all of the authentication can be handled generally in the Power Automate, as you've seen with this more sophisticated flow here. The real trick or the real, I suppose, skill is getting this JSON um, you know, um, template here correct. That can take a bit of mucking around, but hopefully uh, that is available to you. Once you've got that, all the fields that come back from uh, this HTTP, this uh, API call will be available to you in Power Automate and you can then you know, post them in Teams or send emails out or do whatever. So I think that what we'll see going forward is more companies are now realizing that APIs are the way to share and interact between um, SaaS based programs and they're making those available and documenting those. There obviously are a number of ones that are free. So you've got Dilbert, you've got you know, stock market ones, you've got news. There's a lot of APIs that are out there that you can implement or use for free. You can then look at manipulating or working with your own Microsoft 365 environment using the APIs that are available because you've already got uh, the authentication inside that environment. And then it is possible to use other third parties where you actually do have to uh, authenticate to get the information. So what we expect to see over time is the capability of these APIs to provide even more power to the you know, power platform environment. So again, we can use APIs to you know, pull data into things like Power BI, um, Power Automate as we've done here. So if you haven't looked at uh, Power BI, uh, sorry, if you haven't looked at the APIs at all, then I would suggest uh, go in, have a bit of a play around with it. My advice to you is to have a look at doing the daily Dilbert. Uh, very simple, it's read only, you're not changing any data, you're just displaying something uh, on the screen here. So if we go in once again and have a look at this, you'll see that it's very, very simple. We just need a trigger, which is standard with any uh, Power Automate. And we then just go out and call this URL here and that will come back with you know, a picture and a little bit of text. We then just convert that into fields and we're good to go. So it's a very simple uh, way to start playing around with APIs. Once you've got that, then I would start looking at some of the APIs that Microsoft does provide that may benefit you know, your environment. So for example, you can have APIs that look at your mailbox or look at other mailboxes or do something in Teams uh, and basically build from there. So. I think in summary, the main point is to appreciate that the Power Platform is fantastic. It does a huge amount of stuff already. A lot of people tend to think of it as limited to the Microsoft 365 environment only, only inside that tenant. However, with the growth of APIs from third parties, 
you can now start working with information outside your tenant and bring it inside uh, your environment and provide you know, additional value to that. There's just a whole range of APIs that are possible. So the reality is you can really just about achieve anything provided you know the service has an API because it just makes it so easy, as you've seen here, to do with uh, the Power Platform. The last thing again to remember is that the HTTP action is a premium connector and you'll see here it's got a little diamond here uh, on my flow. So if I go back to my flows here, you'll see that uh, that little diamond indicator indicates obviously that they have a premium connector for which you would need a premium uh, Power Automate license, but you would only need one for the person uh, generally creating that. So again, keep that in mind. That's the only thing that may again, be a little bit uh, different from your environment, just make sure you do have that uh, premium uh, connector. All right, well, I think that's probably enough for me for the time being. I will hand back over, I believe, to Andrew. Uh, are there any questions or thoughts on any of that from anybody listening? Thanks, uh, thanks, Robert. Yeah, I've got a, a couple of questions. Um, firstly, the uh, JSON file um, that you're using there, I must admit, when I sort of started with the JSON, it was a bit daunting, but I did sort of find that it it's in a like an array format, um, and from that array format, you can you can gather details or, or gather data. If you just want to bring up, if you can bring up a uh, the JSON view, you feel you filter through the array down into the data, um, and and when you sort of think of it like that. It does become quite, quite simple, uh, quite simple to follow. Um, a bit like I, I don't know if people remember what the old um, INI files or any files used to be in in Windows. Um, it's a very similar uh, process where each um, each category is in an array, and as you filter down into the array, you then get to the specific uh, uh, data that you're after. I think it's at the end of, at the end of the day, JSON is a very standard format which we see, uh, you know, all over the place. I think the problem is is that um, again, you know, this JSON here for the secure score you'll notice is quite extensive, and that's where it be, can become a bit daunting. It's like trying to get it right because if it is slightly wrong, you tend to get all sorts of funnies in there. Uh, so my advice would be, as always, is to start with a very simple example where the JSON you understand you can see it so that's why the Dilbert one is you know only a couple of fields you get a feel for it you're right JSON is very straightforward and formatted but I think for someone who hasn't seen it or experienced it can be a bit daunting if you try and do too much too quickly so again as always work with something fairly simple with a limited subset of inputs uh, that will make it much easier to say, okay, yeah, this field, that field, this field. But again, just remember, it can get quite sophisticated as we've got here with secure score. But that said, remember that that's also very powerful. So when I make a request to the Microsoft graph, it spits back, you know, tons and tons of information potentially. As long as I can format that or work out what the fields relate to, then I've got a huge amount of information I can work with. So again, as always, as with anything, start with something simple, get a feel for it, uh, and then grow from there. Don't try and do too much too quickly. And again, that's why the Dilbert option uh, you know, is the best option. So it's a good one to go to. So the Dilbert option didn't have any authentication. You were able just to put the straight URL in and gain that data correct it's it's what they call a public uh, public api it's a get so it's just reading information it's not doing that from a secure environment uh so that's the easy one to start no authentication very small um amount of um you know data that's coming back basically you know a, a title and a url uh, that's a really good one to obviously you know start things off because like i said there's no cost there's no um uh, you know, it's not intimidating, I suppose, with the amount of stuff here, well documented. So if we go in here again, just to go back to uh, our friend Dilbert, just to show you. So again, you can go in and take the um, the URL here, right? So this is the API here. It's free. There's, that's all you need to do is put those two options in to get there. And you'll see here, if we look at the JSON, uh, it's very, very straightforward. It's only a couple of lines. Yep. Uh, uh, so taking that is, you know, the way to go and then build out from there. But it's core. Like I said, you know, you could, if you wanted to, if the API supported it, you can 
get, re, push, update. You can do basically anything. It's just a, uh, a web request doing it and doing it in the Power Platform makes it nice and easy because if you need to, you can go in here and configure all that authentication in a graphical user interface rather than trying to do it on a single line of code. So that's why I think it's a really good thing. The other thing I was thinking, Rob, is if you are dealing with the new API, um, it'd be good to create a little power automate just like this Dilbert one that just deals with the API. So you can test it out, make sure you understand what you're getting or what you're putting to it first before you go try and plugging it into a much more sophisticated process that you might have in mind for it. I think the the real trick I've found with the Power Automate is look, it, it's low, it's low code, it's really easy to use, it's you know, dead easy to start. Um, that all sounds good until you actually need to do something a little bit more sophisticated. So uh, the uh, example I provided with that secure score, I actually had to divide and format numbers. Uh, turned it out to be much more difficult than I would have thought it would be because in other programming language you can just you know do the formatting or restrict the number of decimal places quite easily. But as you saw, when we actually act, come to do that, uh, it ends up being a division inside a multiplication, inside a formatting. Uh, and I think that's, you know, trying to chew off too much too early is where you get really frustrated and why doesn't this work? So it's really a building process and you'll be surprised how quickly you pick up that knowledge. But again, you know, it is a different environment to develop with. Uh, and that can have its own nuances around things like, well, hang on, this should be easy, but it's not. Uh, and again, just starting simple and then building up that knowledge, I think is is really key here. And, you know, there's lots of, so if you look back here quickly, you'll see that I've got lots of, um, you know, examples, which I would consider to be, you know, very basic. So um, things like the secure score, uh, reading an anniversary date, We've got the one which we spoke about before, which is, you know, allowing staff to access the environment uh, using conditional access. Um, we've got the Dilbert and a number of others there. So, again, just start off simple, build it or build it up, solve simple problems first, and you'll build your knowledge uh, along the way. Fantastic. Really appreciate that, Robert. That was a great um, insight into uh, the premium connectors and uh, APIs to gather the data with and without authentication.